Hey, this is Pete at Bookless Pete. I'm back here for another video, another experiment. Um, today I'm going to try, it's probably too early for me to be doing this kind of stuff, but I'm going to jump on a, a tag, a booktube tag that I found on Kelly's account. Um, the I'm so annoyed booktube tag, and I just have got the questions here. I wanted to do it because uh, I saw her video, she does great videos, and every one of these questions I wanted to jump on right away and comment on. I did leave a couple comments, but I had a lot to say about all of them, but I'll try and go quick. Okay, first question, there's nine, ten questions, nine questions. Question number one, do publishers ever do things that you find annoying? Share an example. Uh, off the top of my head, this is one I didn't ha couldn't think of many things. I did mention in her comments that I get annoyed by trends that publishers have, especially in like self-help. There's always trends. There used to be a trend for really long titles. Recently, there's been a trend to use a, like fuck or shit in a title. It's just to be kind of uh, audacious, I guess. If it works for one book, they keep doing it until uh, the genre gets oversaturated like happened for a while with urban fantasy novels where all the covers looked the same to be honest that doesn't annoy me though because when i was growing up i mean it doesn't always annoy me because when i was growing up like my my mom read these gothic novels and they're famous for having all the same cover you know a woman uh, in a like a 18th 19th century style dress running down a hill running away from a a tower or a mansion or something with like all dark and shadows and like one light high up high up in theirs and those are always cool looking they always made the books uh, intriguing even though there was all the same cover so I don't know they do what they have to do to make money I guess um, and I didn't make notes as usual so I'm probably gonna forget my best points till later okay number two have you ever been annoyed by a spoiler even something as simple as someone else telling you there's a great twist I try to be understanding about spoilers because when I've read something or see something I do like to talk about it with people and I think people get over over attached to not being spoiled on things oh I just remember another thing publishers do that annoy me in penguins they do this now you open a penguin book which are famous for having, you know, the classics are famous for having like 50, 60, 70, 80 page introductions to some of the books. And you'll see this little italicized uh, warning. This introduction can will reveal details of the plot as if we're as readers supposed to be so dumb that we don't know that you can't write a 100 page essay on a 500 page book without discussing the plot. So that's an annoying thing. Again, I can't be. I can't really blame the publishers because they probably get tons of grief when people read Penguins and they're mad that they read the introduction and were spoiled. Skip the introduction. I usually do skip long introductions in in books until I decide whether I like the book. So I'll read the book first, and then if I want to know more about the book, I'll I'll go to the introduction, the scholarly Penguin Classics introduction. If it's a short introduction, like that kind they typically do in New York uh, press books, NYPB books, uh, or, or just regular two, three page introduction. I'll always read that first. Wow, so much for going fast, huh? Okay, number two, finally. Have you ever been annoyed by a spoiler? Oh, I already started talking about that. Okay, the worst thing I ever had spoiled for me in terms of twist ending was not a book, it was the TV series The Prisoner, and I'm still mad about this, even though it was I was barely out of my teens when someone spoiled that for me, and just did it out of pure spite, just pure pleasure. To, wanted to tell me who, who number one was, and uh, didn't really ruin the show. So I guess since I had my my illusions crushed at a at a early age about a spoiler for something where it's got a big surprise ending I, I maybe have been uh, more sanguine about it since then 
Okay, number three. Have you ever been annoyed by what? Okay. Have you ever been annoyed by what discovered in a little free library, a book sale or used bookstore? Tell us what you found and why it was so annoying. Okay, so I'm in Saranda, Albania. I retired last year. I'm traveling around. This is an Airbnb, so don't ask me who made that lovely painting in the back. And unlike other places I've visited, there's really not a lot of bookstores or magazine stores or anything around the parts of Saranda that I've been in. It's a beautiful little beach community. Uh, but if you walk along what they call the promenade, it's like a boardwalk along the sea. Maybe I'll try and, I probably won't, uh, get a picture of it. But there is one free library set up, a stand. Uh, and it's free library is written in English on it. So I don't know if it was set up by some travelers or whatever, but it's completely empty and it's very sad looking. So I don't know if people just didn't use it or they used it for a while or how long it's been there, but it's it's quite a large one, like three or four shelves. And I don't have any books to put there because I just read on my Kindle while I travel, which is what most people do. And so that's, I guess, the saddest. I'm from Seattle. I would walk around Capitol Hill, which is a neighborhood I lived in a long time. And there's tons of little free libraries and I think they were pretty well maintained. And I've never really used them much myself because I'm I've always got a big stack of my own things to read. Okay. I don't like keeping my glasses on because they reflect off the lens, but I can't read these. Okay. So I found a little free library with is empty and that's annoying. Okay. Number four, when it comes to short story collections, are you annoyed if there's a novella in the middle of the collection? Yes, actually I am. I never thought about it before, but I, I am. <laughs> um, you know, the, I think the standard setups usually is you put a bunch of short stories in the front and then your big finish is the novella. There's also another technique I've seen where you put a novel or like this happens with the Richard Matheson novels, which are, you know, they're originally paperback originals, probably like 40, 50,000 words or whatever. Uh, like I Am Legend and uh, The Shrinking Man and for a while they're being reprinted and just to, just to bulk them out, thank God, because his stories are so great, um, they would have uh, five or six short stories after, kind of like feel like a bonus. So that's one way I like to read them. You know, you read something substantial like a novella or a very short novel, which those are really my favorite forms, I think. Um, and then you get a bunch of short stories and you feel like you're getting a, an extra even though you could technically call it a collection. And I think the, and it's another thing that annoys me about publishers is they're so anti short story collections. It used to be, you know, every video I do is gonna sound like this cranky old man shit. And I'm sorry, but you know, they say be real. They say be yourself. Um, when I was a kid and when I was a young man, you could find short story collections from like every novel that you'd like. So you'd read like some science fiction writer or something, you'd come across them and you, I would always look for their short story collection first to see how they handled different themes and things and if I really liked reading them. So it was, I would always go out of my way to find a short story collection. You know, it was that way with Stephen King and even David Brin, who really doesn't write that many short stories. and. And we don't get that as much now. Like, you know, there's really no short story culture. I mean, un, among literary writing there is, but it used to be the same with uh, genre writing too. So when it's in the middle, I can't really think of a time when it's been in the middle. I would just definitely, I would either read it first or skip it because I, I really do poke around a lot in a collection when I'm reading it. I want to make sure that I don't necessarily read it in the order that it's, that they're put in. A lot of times uh, editors take a lot of care with the order and uh, sometimes we'll even put it in the notes. You know, you should read these in order because we set it up a certain way. There was an anthology like that many years ago that I really enjoyed. So I stuck to their order because they told me to and I do what the editor says, I guess. Then other times we'll do things like, like with the, uh, the best, the best of the year 
And so I was religious, put them in alphabetical order. And so you might uh, have like a 60 page story followed by another 60 page story. And I do skip around in terms of how much time I have at the time. I like to read things straight through. So if I read, if there's a novella and a bunch of stories in one collection, you know, sometimes I'll knock off the, the novella first because it'll be, I feel like I accomplished a lot. And then I can read these short stories as like treats or sometimes I'll read the short stories uh, as treats leading up to the main event of the novella. It just really depends. But if it's in the middle, then I've got to look at the table of contents and see where it is. And I guess that's annoying. Okay, deckled edges, beautiful or annoying? All right, so here's again where I show how stupid I am. I didn't know that as soon as I heard the term deckled edges, I, I understood what it was, but I had never heard that term before. And I always thought they really looked really cool. I don't know why they would annoy people, except maybe, I don't know, maybe they look like mold or something to people. I just, I think they're, they're very stylish and, and cool and, and give a book a distinct look. So no, they do not annoy me. Okay. Number seven, if there's a series or collection of certain kinds of books, like an imprint, and changes are made, are you annoyed or okay with it? If yes, give us an example. Oh my God, yes. I hate that. I can't think of an example. Um, Kelly, in her video, has the best example I've seen, which is the, the Soho Crime series. Uh, you know, those, those, you know what's uh, really annoying, though, is paperbacks, the, the mass market paperback, when they started doing the slightly taller mass market paperbacks that don't fit in the shelves in the drugstore. Um, when did they do that? I think it was before the pandemic. Like So like the Jack Reacher novels, you have the, the paperbacks, the regular mass market paperbacks, and then as the new ones come out, you have these slight, slightly taller ones. I don't have any books here because I am traveling, so I can't show any examples, but you know what I mean, and I just hate those tall mass market paperbacks. That's that's what I'm adding to the tag. It's just the most annoying format. It's the mix of the very worst of every format. Um, I really like mass market. I wish it hadn't gone away, but that's me being an old man again. Trade paperbacks are good. They're easy to read. You know, the print's bigger, but the mass market paperback was just so convenient. I love them. And we don't see as many anymore. I guess they still make them for a few really, really popular writers. But then they're going to those tall ones. So irritating. So you have this, this shelf, and it's like, you know, straight here. I'll use the grid on the thing. And then up here, just slightly. Or if you get a used one uh, in the middle, then you've got then you've got like short, 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 tall, 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 short. Uh, that's pretty OCD of me, though, isn't it? Okay. Awkward pause. Keep talking. I'm not going to edit. I decided I would never do this if I had to edit these videos. So if they're bad, they're bad. I'm just doing it for fun, like everybody else. Mm. Okay, do the decision, this is number eight, do the decisions of characters in a novel, novel ever annoy you? Share the book and what decisions you found annoying. Uh, yes, of course, they annoy me all the time, and some of the best characters are annoying, I think. They just do these terrible things with their lives. Uh, Middlemarch I read a couple years ago, and you're reading this young woman, and she has these, these, certain ideas about life and about marriage and you're like ah, it's not gonna work out it's not gonna work out of course um, spoiler alert um, but there would be no story if she didn't make those decisions that's a story about in you know that section of the story and i really didn't understand the rest of the book which was about i don't know land grants or whatever but you know the main story of, of the marriage the young woman her and her first marriage that rich older guy and then you know, subsequent events after that. I really liked that story and I really liked her because she's, she's very young and very, I mean, she has very set ideas, but she's very intelligent too. So, you know, a lot of people, their life plans don't work out the way they thought. And that's why we read, to read about 
people and hopefully either learn from their mistakes or, or just relate to their mistakes and you know that's life so uh, I don't really get annoyed at their decisions because people do stupid things all the time and it's bad enough to have to live with real people who make annoying decisions I'm not, so I'm not going to go after characters for that too but it's an interesting question it gives you a lot to think about I recently read Bride's Head Revisited actually the, the audio book and I became so irritated by, with the narrator by narrator by the third section of the book. I'm, I'm wondering if that's like a common critique of that book because he's just such a he does he he gets into this marriage and he has these kids which he does not care about these kids at all. Uh, it's kind of a not really that rare, I suppose, but you know, because he's so hung up on, oh, these great summers he used to spend, you know, with this rich family, and and just nothing in life can ever compare to Brideshead. My summers on Brideshead, but I really like the novel anyway because I I love reading about that time in history and about the people who were involved in it. Um, he, so he makes some life decisions which are hurtful to other people, which really aren't. The purview of the book, because the book's really about the, the family that lives at Brideshead and the narrator and his interaction and his adoration and love and idealization of the family and and wanting to be part of that 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 world. So I found I guess I found him more just an annoying bug kind of person than than annoyed by the decisions he made, although he did make decisions that for other people weren't so weren't so good. Uh, okay. Are you ever annoyed by how someone organizes their books? What do you find annoying? Is that, did I skip one? No. No. Okay. Are you ever annoyed by how someone organizes their books? What do you find annoying? Well, if I was, I can't think of it. Um, no. It's kind of anticlimactic, but I, I don't think I've ever been annoyed. I like to see what how different ways people set up their books. You know, if there's, I, like everyone else probably here, I'm an introvert, so if I go to a party or something and there's a lot of people I don't know there. Excuse me, I'm going to cough. <coughs> I'll occupy myself in their bookshelf. And I like disorganized bookshelves. Uh, you know, you can find like treasures plugged in here and there, and they kind of give you a clue to the person's personality, how organized they are. You know, what I don't like is when you see bookshelves that are obviously just for for show. I don't think that's such a big deal anymore. I think people used to do it more. They put they put books out on display when they weren't really readers, but there's really no social social cachet to being a reader anymore so people don't really do that I guess I like to see books stuffed everywhere that's then that's when you know there's a real reader if they can't keep up with their own organization system you know that they really are into books okay share something bookish that you find annoying ah I really sh I know I had something for this I'm not going to pause it I'm just going to say that I think the tag covers it pretty well. And I did put some asides, I reinterpreted the question. So probably within all that, you can find out what I, what I find annoying. And then I'm gonna hopefully remember to tag everybody. There's a whole bunch of people tagged here. Before I post this, I'm gonna figure out how to do this. Anyway, this is, uh, this is my response to Kelly at Books I'm Not Reading tag and uh, she's got a really good channel i'm sure if you're seeing this you already know about that channel and that's it for today i'll see you next time